Hey everybody, happy Friday. It is time for Facebook Friday. I hope you guys have had a great week. Let me make sure I can find you guys, make sure I'm in the right place. It's been two weeks since we've had a Facebook Friday and I have lots to tell you guys, lots. Um, on stage, no, backstage, which is where I was in New Orleans, was wonderful. Hopefully you guys saw the pictures that we posted. Um, it just was so good to be back with Stampin' Up! Demonstrators at an event. Um, it was wonderful. I, I have some swap cards that I'd like to share with you guys, but today I have so much to tell you that I'm gonna save that for another week. Um, it was great. And all I can say is it was wonderful. But I'm glad we're back in the swing of things. My kids are in school. Hallelujah. I am back to hopefully being able to think <laughs> incomplete thoughts and uh, back into the regular routine. Hi, guys. It's so good to see you. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch you guys around pretty quickly today because we have got so much. I'm, I have no space. We have got so much to talk about. So I'm going to switch you around real quick and just start showing you all these things. Stampin' Up! has got all kinds of things going on. And I wanna make sure we have time. Also, they, um, sorry, hold on just a sec. Also, today's projects are taking a long time. I have something, <laughs> I don't know, something in my mouth, I don't know what it is. Um, so I need to like get a move on. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Let me get my computer so I can see y'all's comments. Um, first thing I want to tell you about is this really cool event that Stampin' Up! is doing. They've not done this before. It's for World Card Making Day. World Card Making Day is October 1st, 2022. And I don't know what time, but it's an online event and it's completely free. Um, so you can participate completely at no cost. Um, there are three products, three bundles that they're using. Um, and if you happen to order one of these bundles between now and then, you're going to get a package of the iridescent pearls for free. But I have to, I have to warn you that to get those pearls for free, you actually have to go and add them to your cart. They're not add, automatically added to your cart. There's been some frustration with that. So just so that you know. So let's talk about what the three bundles are. The first one is the Cottage Wreaths Bundle, which I love. We will be doing a Facebook Friday with that. So that's one of the bundles that they'll be using. Um, the other one is the Cottage Rose Bundle, which is actually um, the All-Star Tutorial Bundle this month um, that you can earn for free from me. And then the third one is, isn't even out yet. And I just, I zoomed in the picture so you guys could see it. It's going to be in the next spring catalog. It's called Warm Welcome, and it's a Million Dollar Achievers set, and I've had several people ask me if it's mine, and no, it's not mine. I wish it was. No, I mean, I love mine. Don't get me wrong, but I love this. This is probably, after my stamp set, my favorite stamp set in the whole catalog that's coming out. It's so cute, and so they're giving us the opportunity to order it early. They'll be using it in that online event on October 1st. So if you order one of those bundles, the Warm Welcome, the Cottage Reese, and the co or the Cottage Rose, it says you get a package of iridescent pearl basic jewel embellishments for free. You have to add it manually. You know, sometimes when you get something for free, it just automatically shows up in your cart. Well, not this. You have to go over and add it to your cart. And when you do, then it becomes free. Um, I wrote down the item number here for you in case you're gonna order one of these. You can also just search iridescent. I, I can't spell iridescent, <laughs> so that's kind of hard for me. But um, here's the item number if you're like me and you can't spell iridescent, 158788. So any one of those from now until October 1st, um, no purchase is necessary to participate in the event. I wanted to make sure you guys know that too. You can just watch for fun um, and use whatever you have. But isn't that so cute? It's called Warm Welcome. This is Jenny Polly set. She is from Germany, I believe. And I love, 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 love it. So anyway, okay, so that's coming. I wanted to make sure I talked about that because I haven't mentioned that at all. Paper pumpkin. You guys, I know I always say I have extra paper pumpkins. This month's paper pumpkin, the sunflower one, I sold all of mine way before I even got them. I mean, I, you know, like you guys, if you really want a kit, you've got to subscribe 
because I don't always have extras. And I'm just, you know, I feel bad because I, you guys miss out on them and I hate for that to happen. So make sure that you subscribe. Coming up are spooky treats. Um, really cute, my favorite, Halloween. And then here's sneak peeks of this will be September's, October's, and November's, okay? Um, and look, there's a scan the code. So you could scan that code to subscribe. Anyway, I'll have a link up at the top too for you if you want to subscribe. Okay, okay, hold on Facebook. Okay, there. Now I can see you guys. Weekly deals. This is another new thing. I mean, all this new stuff. So exciting. Um, September weekly deals. They started on the 1st, which was yesterday. And every week during September, Stampin' Up! has some things on sale. Um, you know what? I was going to show you. Where did I put my iPad? I'm going to show you how to find this when you go to right here. Those three lines. Um... If you do, no, no, that's not it. Wait a minute. It looks different than on my um, <laughs> specials right here. It looks different on my computer. There's a, a separate drop down thing. Specials right here. Um, September weekly deals right there. Okay. And then you can just see all of them. Um, the craft note, note cards and envelopes are awesome. Those butterfly embellishments, I love them, but they're usually $10, which I feel like, oh, that's a lot. So now that they're $8, I feel like that's more <laughs> reasonable. Um, I love all the embellishments. Craft paper is a staple in my craft room. This uh, Snowfall Accents Puff Paint is awesome. I, uh, I have been using that a lot in planning for the next few months. So just so you know, and there's some of that paper. That's not my kind of paper, but I know a lot of people love that paper, the Splendid Day DSP. So just so that you guys know, there are the weekly deals. It'll be different come the 8th. They'll change over to new deals. All right. And the next thing I want to tell you is Perfect Partners. I've told you guys about this before, and this is what we're doing today, the Perfect Partners. Um, six new sets of dies, right? Um, that go with stamp sets that don't have dies. So here they are, Yeti to Party. We're going to be doing Facebook Friday with this next week. All right, that's my second favorite. Waterfall Canyon, which I told you guys is, I love it, but I'm very intimidated by it. I can't wait to see what some of you do with it. Um, I want to use it. I just, I don't know where to start. Look how many dies there are. It's amazing. Somebody's going to do something amazing, and then it'll inspire me to start. Um, trimming the tree, and this stamp set is in the annual catalog. All right, and then this birthday piggy, which oh, so cute. Look at the wagon. We used birthday piggy already for Facebook Friday, um, and I didn't have the dies at that time. So now you can go back and look at those projects, and it'll be easier. You don't have to fussy cut these guys, which is awesome. And then fresh cut flowers, which is from the annual catalog. And then, of course, the set we're using today is the Apple Harvest set. And, you know, I didn't see where those are on the website. Have you guys seen them? Let's see what it says. Usually right here at the top. Yep, right here. One of, when you scroll through these things, see, look, that there's the weekly deals also. Right there. Perfect partners. And you can open them. So if you already have the stamp set, you can just buy the dies. If you don't have the stamp set and you now you want it, now you're going to save 10% because you can get it as a bundle. All right. And there they all are. Today's blog post, I linked you to both the bundle and just the dies in case whichever one you need um, so that you have those links. Also on today's supply list, I did the same thing. Apple Harvest Bundle. Here's the item number. And then down here, I put the dies also. So if you happen to buy the bundle you don't need to also buy the dies the bundle includes a stamp set and the dies just wanted to point that out okay 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 so there's that pile now let's look over here new all-star tutorial bundle abigail rose um if you are a subscriber i already mailed it out to you yesterday if you didn't get it email me about 10 percent of those never arrive i don't know email people think i'm spam i guess um, you can also earn this for free by spending $50 with me online, um, and then I will email it to you for free. Um, this is my project this month. It's a crisscross box, and inside is some uh, rose soap that I found at TJ Maxx. So um, if you would like that, you can uh, find it also in my PDF store. So if you don't shop with me, if you're a demonstrator, you can also 
get it for free. I mean, get it for $15 in my PDF store. Um, the projects are designed by different demonstrators. I'm one of 12. So different styles. Um, they all have videos. They all have measurements in Imperial and metric and supply lists. Okie dokie. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. Check. We talked about that. Put that up there. I, I need more counter space. Um, scary cute Halloween to go. Halloween treats class to go. Registration is open till until September 21st. There are five 3D projects. You can get it with the bundle or without the bundle. Um, it includes some product as well, like the ribbon and the uh, washi tape. Um, the PDF for this is also available. I can't list the registration link on line per Stampin' Up! policy because it includes some product. You'll have to email me and ask me for that registration link, which I am happy to send you. Or if you are a subscriber to my email list, I've already sent it out um, multiple times. So go back and look for that. Um, or subscribe to my email list so that you will have it. Um, you know, when I email you guys, which is only when needed. I don't spam you, I promise. Um, deadline for that is September 21st. Okay, um, Ringed with Nature is our Club Create kit this month. Subscription is not open. However, I advertise that the PDF is available and I had not updated my Club Create page. I don't know what happened, why I forgot, but it, I, the PDF was in my PDF store, but the Club Create page didn't link it over there. So if you've been looking for this PDF slash video, it is now on the Club Create page page, which is, there's a tab at the top of my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. You'll find it there. Okay. And then for those of you asking, next month's Club Create will feature the Sweet Gingerbread Bundle. I've just finished designing that today and it's so stinking cute. Um, we're getting into Christmas already. Um, so Club Create members, just so that you know, because you guys always ask me about it and uh, that's what's coming. And the video tutorial and the PDF will be available. I don't know if I'll be opening subscriptions or not. It's pretty full, so I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, you guys. Okay. I cleared off the desk, did it pretty fast. <laughs> so if you've never joined me for Facebook Friday before, we're so glad you're here. Every week, I pick a product. And this week, I am using the Apple Harvest um, bundle that's in that perfect partners promotion. Um, and then I designed three projects and we do them as, well, I show you how to make them and then I will send them to you for free as a make and take. Um, if you put in an online order that is $35 or more by Monday. So it's a, like a, a card class that's free with a purchase. If you were to come to my card class in person, your card, your cards that you make would be free with a purchase an online or an order from the catalog. So this is like a to go version of that. Um, if you put in an order, you can order anything you want. Um, as long as it uses that host code, it's $35 or more. And it's by Monday at midnight, I send you the kit. And it looks like this. I don't do any stamping. Okay, the stamping that you see in these kits are thank you tags that I make everyone. But the stamping for your projects, you have to do that yourself. Everything else will be included. This week, you will need the Apple um, Harvest stamp set and the coordinating Apple Blossom dies, as well as the Stitch Greenery die, um, inks, and adhesive, or use what you have. You know, you can always substitute just because you don't have the stamp set I have doesn't necessarily mean you have to have it, but if you want it, now you have three projects designed to use it. Also over at pinkbuckaroo.com under the last photo, hopefully the post is up, you guys. Um, there is a free PDF. It has all the measurements and supply lists of the projects that we're gonna do today, as well as the things I talked about earlier. And it has that host code at the top. Phew, okay. Last but not least, let's do door prize. Kim Nolan, you're the winner. 
Thank you for sharing my video two weeks ago. I'd like to send you this as a prize. I don't think I have your mailing address, Kim. Um, if you'll message or email me, I would love to send this to you in the mail. This week, I've got a new Snowman Magic bundle from the Holiday Catalog. I just designed some projects with this bundle, too, and it's so cute. I love it. So um, if you would like to win, all you have to do is share the video and let me know in the comments that you shared as well. And next week, I will pick somebody at random to win. Okay, you guys, are you ready? I hope you all have had a good week. I hope you have. You know, as soon as it gets September here, September is my favorite, favorite month because it is my birthday month, first of all. And second, it's the end of the hellacious heat. I mean, not completely. Don't get me wrong. It's still hot but it starts to tick down a little bit. So it's my favorite. And it means pumpkins and fall and all the things that I love. So <laughs> as soon as September 1st hits, man, I'm one of those people that I'm like, bring out the pumpkins, bring out the fall decorations, I'm ready. So apples to me are very fallish as well. Um, when I was teaching kindergarten, that was one of the very first units we did was a big apple unit where we'd weigh and measure and taste and sort and do all that fun stuff with apples. So it always feels like, you know, September to me. Um, and when I saw the stamp set, I loved it. It's great for teachers, teacher gifts, but, but not necessarily only for teachers and teacher gifts, right? So um, what I'm making today is not teacher specific. They're just, we're going to use the three sentiments on here. The first thing we're going to do with these guys, obviously these are images that need to be colored in. And we are going to, I'm getting ready to sneeze. We're, <laughs> fair warning. We're gonna use watercolor pen, pencils. If you haven't used watercolor pencils before, they're really a great way to um, start watercoloring without the intimidation. But I have to show you the difference. Um, yesterday, I made this one for the YouTube recording. And I realized as I went that this was not the same green as I used here. And then on the video, I couldn't remember where did that pencil come from? Because we have two sets of water of watercolor pencils. Um, and one of them has like your, just your regular, like old olive, real red. And then the other one has more bright colors. But I couldn't remember if we had a granny apple green pencil, which we do. So I... I used old olive, but the funny thing is, is this one right here, see how this one, I think it's this one, one of them, and this one too, Flirty Flamingo, years ago, we got two, oh, maybe it's this one, no, that's it, I think it's these two, years ago, in a paper pumpkin kit, we got two watercolor pencils, and Flirty Flamingo and Lemon Lime Twist were the colors that we got, and I have kept them, but they're not available, is, Flir is Flirty Flamingo in that? Anyway, I was worried, did I use Lemon Lime Twist? But no, Granny Apple Green is available in that assortment too. So that's what we're gonna use because I definitely like the brighter green for sure. All right, so we're gonna use watercolor paper and we're gonna use Stays On. And the reason we're using Stays On is because we're gonna use water. And when you use water, you need to use Stays On. Uh, Memento will bleed and run with water. Now, if you use stays on, okay, I don't like that. Let's try that again. If you use stays on with your um, stamp and blends, you're going to get a big muddy mess because that's alcohol and alcohol and they don't go together very well. There, that's better. So stays on is for watercoloring and I'm missing a stamp. And memento is for your stamp and blends. All right, do I need this stamp? No, I don't need the stamp. That's for another project. That's why it's on the other, on the other one. But I do need to do this. <laughs> Hope you're feeling better. Do I want to do it in stays on? Yeah, we're gonna do it on stays on. It looks like maybe I did it in soft suede, but it's crooked. But that's okay. We can adjust. Okay, let's color. I'm gonna bring my chair over because I have a hard time coloring when I'm standing up. I don't know about you guys. There was a blue one too in the in the um, in the paper pumpkin kit. There was a blue one. Is that what you guys are talking about? Um, now I'm gonna use just a a um, bowl of water because I feel like I have better control that way. When you're doing something this little, 
if I start squeezing water and it goes all over the place, it's going to be hard because this is, um, the, it's small, right? The images are small and the, and the water's going to go all over the place. So I'm going to just use my bowl of water. I feel like I have better control that way. All right, so I'm just going to use real red. Have you guys used watercolor pencils before? That's the question. I don't think I've ever used them on a Facebook Live. Maybe a long time ago. I don't use them very often. I'm a, you know, stamp and blends girl. But they're awesome. And there are watercolor pencils outside of Stampin' Up! World too. These are like not just Stampin' Up! specific. People use these outside of stamping. And my mom actually had some that she gave me a long time ago. And that's kind of what I learned on. But these are all Stampin' Up! specific colors. So you'll know, you know they'll match. Um, one thing I want to recommend is that you make sure your uh, pencil is nice and sharp. Um, that I think that's kind of a given, but I want to point that out because it's going to help you put get better levels of color, if you will, right? Now I'm just going to use, I'm using the skinniest water painter and I'm going to just spread that around. And what it does is it makes it look not like pencil marks anymore. It makes it look like ink. Okay. And I'm just using the very tip of my marker, I mean of my uh, water painter. And you want to make sure you don't get too much water. Yesterday I did that. Um, I, you know, I try to zoom in, you guys. It's really hard on this. Let's, let me try it. Sometimes it messes it up. Let me see. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Okay, there we go, there we go. There's going to be a, there is a clean recording on YouTube that will have it zoomed in way more. And Carla, this thing on my nails, my nail girl was like, oh, do you want a flower on your nails? And I was like, I didn't really think I wanted one, but then I was like, okay. And it's white and it doesn't look like a flower. It's almost like, um, like a, et, like a etched ceramic kind of looking. It looks weird. I was like, okay, that looks like a dimensional backing now on my, <laughs> on my nail. <sighs> I, I don't know. I knew somebody was going to ask me that. All right, so now I'm going to take my granny apple and just color in those leaves. I'm going to try to go fast because this really does take a long time. Um, Christine suggests that you emboss your image with like black so you have wells. That does, that, that is a good idea too. Um, that kind of keeps your water within the embossed lines. So that is an option. Now I'm gonna take this green and not, not have it go all the way out to the edges of some of those leaves so that they're a little bit lighter on the edges. All right, and now here's where things get tricky. You don't want your water from your leaves to run into the water on your apples. So be real careful. And if you're concerned, give it some time to dry. Make sure you go real light on the water with your leaves. And we'll see if I do it. Yesterday I did it I ran right here. I ran into the, well, I did right there. Okay, well, we're gonna pretend like that's a leaf. That right there, that little boop right there is an apple, but we're just gonna make it a leaf. <laughs> But it, yesterday I had colored it red and then the green ble bled in and it was a mess. So then what you can do is take your paper towel and just dab up the water and it removes a lot of the color. And then you can go back over it with your pencil. I'm getting, I'm getting crazy. I'm getting too much water on this. So have you guys gotten out your pumpkins, your fall decorations? Are, are we team fall or we team don't mess with my summer it's still summer I know there's going to be some from each each side and I, I get it it's just perpetually summer here forever so I'm like oh god let's pretend like it's not all right so now you can take your pencil and add more color you can add in you know for some shading effect if you want 
Um, now that it's wet, the color's gonna go on a little bit differently. I'm gonna take early espresso and color the branches. My, my college age daughter is coming home t tomorrow morning for the first, she has to work, she has to work tonight, but she's gonna come home tomorrow for the first time since she went back to school. She's She's been a little, I think she's been a little homesick. Maybe it's boyfriend sick, maybe it's that, but. <laughs> She has, she, you know, she was excited to go and she loves being there, but I, I can tell that there seems to be more of a adjustment this time around, maybe, I don't know. She's living in an apartment, which she loves, but that first week, I don't know, she was a little, yeah, I, don't, I guess it's just first week, you know, trying to figure everybody out, figure out your professors and all that. Okay, now, take your green, and I'm just going to, add some color like this. We're gonna cut some leaves out of this, okay? And then get your water and just get it kind of, spread it around like that. Get, that, get all that color moving around so that it's not just like a solid, you want different variations. Nina, you're getting yours out this week? Yeah, I usually do mine on, um, Labor Day weekend. <laughs> All right, then you can take your paper towel and just kind of dab it and that'll give you some variation too. All right, and then the last thing we're gonna do, ooh, my water is turning awfully green, is, where did I put my pencils? Right here. Well, you know what, I have this. Here's the other way to watercolor, okay? You just get your um, water and you use the inside of your lid. I'm gonna do some yellow for the flowers. Okay, so there's that. Now, we're gonna let that sit and dry for a few minutes. Let's move this weird, gross looking water over here. Move that over here, and let's do the background. I've pulled out one of my artistic mix masks and a piece of craft paper. And let's see, do I have adhesive? Okay, see, now I gotta zoom out. Let's see. If I can do it, there we go, okay, okay. After four years, I'm starting to get the hang of this, Facebook Live. Now I just put a little bit of adhesive on the back and I'm gonna take my mask right here. And usually when I mask, you guys, I, I'm all in. I wanna cover the whole thing. But this time, I just wanna do a little, like a little boop there in the middle, okay? Kind of a, you know, kind of a, abstract little, and you can see here, I went a little too dark on that one. So I'm gonna to try to go lighter this time. So soft suede, I'm gonna run it off, and then I'm gonna start here in the middle and just kind of do like a, like that. Let's see, okay, okay, good, I like it. My tendency is to just keep going and going and going and going and going on that, but I will not do it, I will stop. Now I'm gonna take um, number 100. This is one of our darker natural tone blends. I'm just gonna kind of flick on some ink, okay? And then we'll pull that up and grab our trimmer. Oh, trimmer, trimmer. How does a trimmer hide? What? You guys, where did it go? I have two trimmers and neither one are sitting here. Oh, I see it fell to the back. Of course it did. Hold please. All right, I don't know how that happened. Okay, now normally I cut four by five and a fourth because I want a little white border, but I want this one to cover the entire card front. We don't have craft size cards but I'm gonna make this one look like that, that that's what we have, okay? Maybe I need to go over a little bit more. We want that centered. All right, so cut it down four and a fourth by five and a half right there, okay? All right. Why does that look crooked? Let's see. 
Let's see. I don't know what that is. Hmm. No, it's not. It's my eyes deceiving me. All right, so now I'm gonna put this on a basic white card base. And you've gotta be really careful when putting this on because we're gonna put a lot of adhesive on this so it will not peel up from that card base. Um, oh, Jennifer, she says you found the paper pumpkin. It was, a, it's a Sarah thing. I remember that. Actually, it came with four pencils. Daffodil Delight. Mel okay, well, that's not the one I'm talking about then because it had um, lemon lime twist in it. There was another one that had flirty flamingo and lemon lime twist. There was another one. I don't remember that one having it. Let me look at that one. That other pink. Yeah, that's not Melon Mambo. It's Flirty Flamingo. See, it doesn't have a name on it. And this one doesn't either. That looks more Lemon Lime Twist than that one. But I, I know there's a Lemon Lime Twist pencil that was flirty flamingo. I, I know I didn't dream that. All right, I have cut out a frame from our fabulous frame dies. And I'm gonna grab my foam adhesive strips. And I'm gonna use this. This is gonna be easier than using mini dimensionals. Like that. Okay, and we're gonna put that right in the middle. Okay, now we're gonna use this new stuff called silver threaded twine, silver threaded twine. And it's thick, kind of like rope, right? And I'm gonna cut off a piece. Oh, Lisa says it wasn't a paper pumpkin. It was just a kit that had those two. Okay, okay, that would make sense. All right, so then now you're gonna wanna untwist these like this. And then look, it's like magic. It comes right out. And now you've got all this like rustic -y twine. Very easy to pull out. Okay, so we've got that. We need to do our die cutting first though. So let me put these pencils here. Let's grab this and hope that our paper is dry enough for this. Okay. Now, this set has a large number of dies. Obviously, it has the dies to cut out the apple images, right? And I am gonna use some post-it tape because my plate, which is relatively new, is already warped. But look how many leaves we've got. I don't have to run the leaf die through like eight times because we've got like six different leaf dies. Or maybe there's eight. One, two, three. Six, seven, eight, yeah, eight, nine. Gosh, there's a lot. And then we're gonna do these little flowers, not the big ones, the little ones. We're gonna do them over here on this yellow Daffodil Delight part. And then, let's see, I'm gonna put this right here. The reason I stamp that on the watercolor paper is because I want it to match the other paper. If I, it, you know, our watercolor paper isn't quite white and it's not quite vanilla. It's its own deal. So I wanted it to, to make sure that it was staying within the same colors as everything else. Wow, did you see that? That was pretty cool how they all came off like that. All right, there's our, there are our apples. And then this die comes with your apple dies, which is a great little label die. And then we've got the flowers and the leaves and now we have everything but i think i'm gonna add some more color i don't like how pale those flowers are so let's get my little i'm gonna do this put those in there so that i don't lose them all right so now we've got all these pieces right but i want to add a little bit of color 
No, well, maybe I'll just leave them. The leaves, they seem pretty pale. Okay, back to our twine. I'm also going to use this, and I know this looks weird, but you guys, weren't you here a few weeks ago when I used the circle, the um, stitch circles from the stylus shape dies to make a ring? Do you remember that? Well, that's what is that's what this is left over. It's just a big piece of foam adhesive sheet. And I'm just going to use it on the back because we don't want to waste, right? All right, so just kind of wrap these around your finger and then just kind of make them look like a mess <laughs> until it's a mess that you like. And then just kind of lay it down and then put your dimensionals on top your foam adhesive sheet right on top to hold it down, okay? So then, now we have like this little like natural looking nest behind it. And I have a, here's the circle, a stitched, st <laughs> a stitched circle from Stylish Shapes. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Cut in vellum, <laughs> okay? All right, now let's bring back this. And let's get this, and let's get another piece of this. I love these foam adhesive sheets so much. All right, now, you put that behind there, you won't see it. And we're going to put that right there in the corner. And we're going to take, let's actually do our leaves. Now, you could leave those leaves off. However, I feel like it really adds a lot when you just kind of tuck them in here. Okay, like that. Aw, thanks guys. This card is one of those that kind of ran away with itself. I was like, well, let's use watercolor pencils. Well, let's use masking. Well, let's use 40 die cuts. You know, sometimes that just happens. <laughs> And when I recorded the video yesterday, it was like 28 minutes long. And I was thinking, oh my, that is going to be a long Facebook Friday if that's one project. So I'm trying to just go fast. Okay, so there's that. And this guy looks like he's out on his own. You need to stick down in there, dude. All right, there we go. Okay, now, how about let's put our sentiment on there. I do like this label quite a bit. Long and skinny you know, like me. Haha, ha, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, especially after New Orleans. Oh my gosh, you guys, the food. Oh, the food in New Orleans. Um, we went to a place one morning. We tried to go back the second morning, but there was like an hour wait called the Ruby Slipper. I'm sure if you've been to New Orleans, you may know about it. Um, we ordered for the table for everybody to have a few bites of because it was too decadent for one person to eat white chocolate let me see if i can get it right white chocolate bread pudding pancakes i mean and i can't i can't stop thinking about it my friend hattie said the same thing she can't stop thinking about it i need some i need some white chocolate bread pudding pancakes in my life it was so delicious and, you know, that's a way to not overeat. You order it for the table. Everybody shares it. Everybody gets a few bites. You indulge a little bit, but you don't eat a whole giant plate and make yourself sick first thing in the morning. Okay, come on. These are the um, iridescent pearls that you get for free if you order one of those bundles that I was talking about in the beginning. Why don't I use the right end of this? That would be a lot easier. And the glue is not dry. Okay. Ta-da! This card only required 40 steps. <laughs> okay, now look. Wait a minute. That is the different color, too. I don't know what I used. Okay. See, this is what happens when you don't keep your, your pencils together. That looks like granny apple and that is looks like lemon lime twist i don't know maybe i used garden green but that doesn't really look like garden green so you know what you just make your leaves whatever color you want i can't tell you which one is best 
because <laughs> I've used all three. That's a little too bright. That's a little too dull. And that's perfect. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so typical. I make these things and then I can't remember how I made them. Okay, now let's move on to a card that's a little bit easier. Let's see, what inks do I need for the next card? I can't remember. Do, 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 maybe real bad? I can't remember. I know we don't need that. Okay. Let me put this over here and grab this one. I think this is my favorite. This one uses that Gingham Cottage, Cottage Gingham Designer Series paper. And I absolutely love that paper. I used it with my Sweet Gingerbread Club projects today. It's so, so cute, okay? This time, we are going to use our Stampin' Blends. I feel a little more confident when I use Stampin' Up, or Stampin' Blends than when I watercolor. I don't know why. Maybe I have better control. Things aren't leaking over into the other parts, but sometimes they do, I don't know. All right, you're gonna stamp that dude, that cute little apple. Now, where's that other stamp that I said I needed the last time and I did it? Hold on, let me clean it, because now it has the wrong ink on it. And then we're gonna stamp these little blossoms. Um, Catherine, you don't put out your pumpkins till the end of September or the 1st of October. Yeah, that's probably normal. That's probably more reasonable. The problem here, if you put your pumpkins, your real pumpkins out too soon, then they like rot in the sun. You know, they're just, just way too hot and everything just like decays. It's a problem. Okay, now I'm gonna use real red for this. And actually I'm gonna start with dark. And one thing to notice you guys, should I zoom in again? Am I? Rolling the dice too much by trying to do this again. Okay, there we go. Don't let me forget to zoom out again. One thing about this image, um, you'll see right here, this red part is very small. And honestly, the first time I colored it, I got way out of the lines and had to, to do it again. So what I found is that you need to just kind of tap your color in there it's very, very small, like almost your, the end of your stamp and blend is fatter than some parts of this, this um, apple. So just take your, whichever end you want, and just go real slow and just kind of tap that color in, in those small places. Okay. And doing it on camera makes it even harder. And you know what, look, I've, I have my glasses. I put them over here today. I'm getting to where I'm remembering my glasses because I really need them. All right, well, I just went out of lines there, but y'all are gonna pretend like you didn't see that. Okay, now for this big guy, I'm gonna start with light real red because we're gonna do some shading on this one. Light real red, which is really kind of a pinky red. I'm gonna just kind of tap that color around those leaves too. Now the artist, whoever drew this, gave us a clue on the shading with these little, well, I guess they're shading marks. I guess you would call them little kind of pixelated marks right here. So that is an indication that you wanna take your dark and just add it wherever those are and under that leaf little bit over here and then kind of under that leaf too. Take your light and blend it all together. All right, now I'm gonna take Petal Pink Light. And actually, you know, I did two different colors. I think that this one I probably, here again, I don't remember what colors I use. I think this is probably one of the skin tone blends rather than petal pink, but I think they both work. So I'm just gonna take petal pink and just kind of go around those edges and in the middle, a little bit of 
little bit of pink. I'm also going to add some there to the middle of each of those blossoms like that. And then I don't have my grain, so let me grab the um, DSP, the pattern paper. The gingham paper is Garden Green, and we do not have Garden Green Stampin' Blends. So I'm using Granny Apple Green, and uh, I think it, it goes well enough because it has that lighter shade underneath. See right there? I think, I think it looks fine. If, uh, I don't know, you could play around with what other green Stampin' Blends we have, but I, I felt like this was a pretty good match. All right, I'm going to take my dark and just add in some dark kind of where those veins are. I'm not going to get too crazy with the shading there. All right, and then Crumb Cake. Crumb Cake like that. for our stem and that is it. All right, let's stamp our sentiment. We're gonna cut it out all at the same time. The greatest gift is a good friend. A pretty font. All right, now let me zoom out again. Nope, it always takes me two tries to get it to work. There we go. Yes, I know that I could have a fancy software that would do that, but that fancy software doesn't work for me in this house with this internet. Maybe in the new house, we'll see. Okay, we're gonna use this right here. And then I'm not gonna cut those flowers out to save time. I've already cut them out ahead of time just to save us a few minutes. But there are the matching dies, of course. Set that down carefully and run it through. All right, so now the other thing that we're gonna do, I have already ahead of time cut out two of the tailor-made tags, um, Garden Green and um, Soft Sea Foam. Okay, and we're going to use this die. This is the stitched greenery die that adds stitching. Just adds, it doesn't cut anything out. It just cuts like stitching lines in your project. It's really cute. All right, let's take a look. If I can get it to come up. There we go. I love this die. We need more dies like this with different patterns on it. Okay, now I think we're ready to start putting all of this together. The Taylor made tag dies come with these little um, reinforcers that you would see on a tag. So I've cut those out from basic white and I'm gonna see if I can not make a giant mess with my glue. I'm just gonna do a little doot 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 doot. Okay. You guys, Charlie got out yesterday and I didn't know he was out. And the neighbor came and said, are you missing a dog? And I realized there was no barking. So I said, yes, I must be. <laughs> and uh, he said, I looked up and he there was another dog in my yard, just there with my dog. <laughs> Oh, Charlie, I don't know how he got out or how he got into the neighbor's yard. We have a green belt behind us. And in the past, he has gotten out through the back gate and gone through the green belt. There's no opening on the ends of the green belt, so he has to go through someone's yard to get out. I don't know what he did. So, you guys, small or big? I really like the big on this. I think I'm going to stick with the big. But he... um got into his yard and was playing with the dog that I remember I was saying I was worried about the Rottweiler next door. Well, we can now confirm that that Rottweiler is perfectly calm. He played with Charlie, wasn't a problem. Although, <laughs> Charlie is missing his collar. I'm not sure what happened there. His collar is gone. 
which makes me think he got it caught on something. I don't know. Maybe they got into a real little wrestling match. I'm not sure. But he was very proud of himself. There were paw prints in the front, so he got in the front somehow. He loves getting out. He loves it. He lives for getting out of the yard and getting out of the house. And we take him for walks, but man, he wants to be free. <laughs> he wants to not be on a leash. He wants to be on his own. Okay, now I'm going to take, I took two more of these. I may have cut that a little bit short, but I think it'll be okay if we double it. And I'm going to take my, this is the real red ribbon that comes in a pack with um, the green ribbon. And I'm going to take my blocks to hold that down. If you only have two hands like me and you need a third hand, you can use your blocks <laughs> as your third hand to hold that down. And then we're just going to tie that around like that. And then snip, snip, and there we go. And I may need to cut these a little bit shorter, probably. Okay, isn't that cute? That would make a cute little Christmas tag with something else on it. All right, again, let's do the same thing here. Fold in half, I'm doing okay on time. Next project doesn't take too long. Put that there. You guys, somebody's having trouble with sound? Tell them to get it, like leave and come back. That usually will fix it if they can't hear me. Okay, so now we're gonna do this. Boop, boop. And let's see if I can, I, these are not my good ribbon scissors. Let's see if I can cut that a little bit shorter. A little bit. These definitely need to be shorter. Okay, so there we go. We've got our two cute tags. We're gonna put the first one on flat, boring and flat. <laughs> That's because we're gonna put everything else on with dimensionals. All right, so there's that guy. And then this guy, he gets dimensionals. He's not boring. Yes, Melly. <laughs> yeah, when you only have two hands, you have to find ways to come up with a third to hold on, hold down your things. All right, these guys are going to go on with dimensionals right there. This guy is going to go on with two dimensionals in the middle to make it even. I have another story to tell you guys about my daughter, but I don't know if she's going to get mad if I tell you guys. It's a funny college kid story. Should I tell you guys? I don't know. She laughs at herself. She thinks it's funny, so I'll tell you. I mean, it's not really that funny. Now it's funny, but it was scary at first. She called me this morning, and she said, that allergy medicine that you put in my first aid kit, does it make you drowsy? Okay, first of all, I made that a year ago. I have no idea what's in it. I can't remember. I put a lot of things. I got like a little tackle box, put all the things she was going to need, you know, Tylenol, ibuprofen, Band-Aids, Neosporin. I don't know what else. There was a bunch of things in there. And I said, um, okay, first of all, we're done. Ta-da! Isn't that cute? I tucked one in there, one there, one there, and then we're done. So let me finish my story while I'm cleaning up. Um... <laughs> She, she says, I said, Ellie, what, what, what is allergy medicine? And she said, um, the little pink pills. And I'm thinking, and I said, you mean the Benadryl? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I said, oh no. First of all, you're supposed to take one of those. Maybe two if you're like having an allergic reaction. I said, and I went to pull out mine because I'm thinking, it does it even say allergies on there? Well, it does. Benadryl says, first runny nose, whatever, all that. And so, of course, that's what she would take. I, I feel bad. I should have explained. I should have given her a little tutorial <laughs> what I put in there. So she said, um, I'm just now getting to class. I don't think I can keep my eyes open. I said, you're going to have to go home and take a nap for several hours. 
And it kind of worried me because three is a lot. But thanks to my mom, she and I had figured out that you're not going to die from three Benadryl. You're going to sleep a really long time. But I've already talked to her. She woke up. She went to a class later. She's fine. But I just felt so bad because I'm the one that gave her the medicine. But she didn't read the directions on the bottle. So if you have a college kid, remind them to read the directions on the back of the bottle. <laughs> or call their mom. Denise, right? Call your mom and ask your mom before you take three pink pills from the tackle box. <laughs> she doesn't get sick very often, so I don't know. Oh, I felt bad. I was really kind of scared. But she's okay. Okay, that is my story. Um, don't tell her I told you guys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right one 3d project i had to find something apple related have you guys had these nature's bakery from target i did i had to do some taste testing for you guys so i want to make sure you would like them and i can guarantee you that they are delicious um they actually kind of are like a fig newton mm, kind of like a fig newton but they have apple like apple pie stuff inside delicious okay so nature's bakery oatmeal crumble i linked them today on amazon for you but if you're in target you'll find them cheaper there um and the, the other thing i wanted to say is there's a green apple on here but i didn't want to color my apple green i wanted to color it red so that's that <laughs> okay let's start with our uh so saffron piece of cardstock I know you guys are like, oh my God, and then funny. I know, that's kind of how I was. Like, I wanted to laugh, but then I also was like, um, should you go to the hospital? I don't know, let me Google it, I don't know. Um, I was surprised that she was able to get up at 11 to go to an, a class. This was like at eight, so she said she felt better. We'll see how she feels this afternoon when I call her. She's gonna feel awful, I think. Three Benadryl, Whew. Um, Six and a fourth by seven and a fourth. The measurements are on the second page of the PDF today. So don't feel like you have to write it down. Just go over there and print it. On the long side, we're going to score at three quarters of an inch, three and a fourth, four, six and a half. Turn it, score at three fourths, and five and a half. All right, and before we do any cutting or anything, we're going to take that, that little flower, which now is all the way over here, and we're going to stamp. Hold on, hold on. i got to clean it. We're going to stamp, oh my goodness, did I put the ink over here too? I did. We're going to stamp it all over and sew saffron, okay? So just, you know, don't make it all exactly. Ooh, that looks a little too close. Just kind of, you know, whatever, all over. This is probably the back side. I'm not going to care too much about the back side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One more. Boop. Okay, maybe one more. Okay. <laughs> and Melanie, she says, my daughter calls me several times a day, but when she didn't, it sent us into a panic. Yeah, I know. It, the worrying never stops, right? It doesn't. Claritin non drowsy Okay, you know, Denise, we don't have allergies too bad in our family, so I didn't even enter my mind to put something like that in there. I put Benadryl in there, because, you know, sometimes you need a Benadryl. Like if you get, I don't know, if you got stung by a wasp and it started swelling or I don't know. I don't even, I can't, I don't even know what we use Benadryl for around here. We use it occasionally, but not very often. It would not be my go-to for if you have a runny nose. <laughs> Unless you're going to bed. I don't know. Um, that was poor planning on mom's part. Okay, so this piece looks like this. It's equal, it's symmetrical so pick one side it doesn't matter which side and you're going to cut off the corner the square corners and when you do cut this side at an angle like that and then snip you know what i think we have benadryl for honestly why i have a big thing of benadryl is for my dog now that i'm thinking about it he need they said he has um um a cancerous spot on his hip that he's had for years so don't worry um and she said that if you give them benadryl it would keep it from spreading or it would keep it from spreading fast and so i believe that's the only reason we have that bottle i mean i'm trying to think of what else i would use benadryl for 
I would think allergic reaction. I mean, I guess people use for allergies. I don't know. It would help you sleep, that's for sure. Okay, what adhesive do I want to use? We're just going to use this. Um, this is probably, you would probably want to use tear and tape or, um, <sighs> hello, stamp and seal plus or Tombow, but I'm just going to go for quick. Now here's the back edge, right? We fold, we folded that other edge over the opposite edge. Now we've got this rough edge here. So that's going to be our backside. So fold in the sides and fold in the backside. I know it sounds wrong, but you're going to fold the backside in. The front is going to be the last thing that you fold in because that way you have smooth round corners on all four, on all four sides of the front. Okay. So now take your delicious little bar, put it in there and you're going to fold that down. We're not going to adhere this part. I'm going to use this ribbon. Look how lovely my bolt of ribbon is. I don't know what happened to it, but it's not very presentable, but it's still very usable. So who cares? <laughs> I think my drawer, my ribbon drawer is almost too shallow for ribbon. And if it's a big bolt of ribbon, it gets caught. And then, you know, you know what I'm doing. I'm like pulling the drawer like that. And that's probably how they got ripped off. Okay, this is um, a really fat ribbon. So I'm not going to do a bow. I'm just going to do a knot. Okay, and let's see if these will cut my ribbon nicely. <gasps> they did. They're not gunked up. Too bad. There we go. Okay, so there you go. There's your box easy. And I will tell you, I found something today at Bath and Body Works and I bought it. Look how cute. Champagne, apple, and honey. So I feel like I need to make one more apple project with the plaid paper. Stay tuned. We'll see. It's supposed to rain here all weekend. Hallelujah. So maybe I'll design that this weekend and get it up for you guys next week. This time we're going to use the single apple memento black. And this time we're gonna use sweet sorbet. And the reason I am using sweet sorbet is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to use sweet sorbet. Maybe it's because when I opened the drawer to get some DSP out, it was the first one I saw and I grabbed it. So that's why. You can use any reds. You can use Poppy Parade. You can use Cherry Cobbler if you want a dark apple. You could use your green. I mean, you decide. Green apple, yellow apples. Ask my kindergartners, they know. Apples come in a variety of color. All right, so now I'm gonna use the brush end. I don't ever use the brush end except when I'm flicking ink or when I have a big open space to color like this. Okay, now grab the dark again, the artist has given us some indication that this is probably darker on this side. Um, Melly says, I've ironed my ribbon before when it comes wonky. You know, I have a travel iron that I keep here in my craft room for just that purpose. Also, I bought a teeny tiny flat iron and I don't know where I bought it, but I remember it was really cheap. It's a teeny tiny flat iron and it does great with ribbon as well. All right, so let's blend all this together. Get nice and smooth. And then you can take your color lifter and just kind of do like a shine mark right there if you want. Now we're gonna get Granny Apple. I cannot tell those apart. They are so close. Granny Apple light. Do, 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 do. I hope you guys have a fun, something fun planned for Labor Day. Here, our lake is empty, so we can't go to the lake. Although my husband still thinks we can, but I've told you guys I about die climbing out up the cavern. Our, our lake is now in a, what's left of it is in its way down deep. We have to like scale a wall to get down there. So I don't want to do that. But hopefully you guys, did I add dark? I don't remember. Hopefully you guys where you are are going to have some nice weather and you can do something nice 
for Labor Day. I have a feeling that we won't be doing anything. Mm, I think I'm gonna leave that. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. I know. Let me show you what I've got. Oh my gosh, I can't pick that up. A little piece, another piece of the gingham, cottage gingham. Here's the sweet sorbet DSP. I cut it out using that same label that we've used on the other two projects. I have a, um, don't have an ink pad again. Um, this is from the potted succulent dies. And we're gonna stamp that on the right side. Thanks for your kindness. So that's a nice stamp. Thanks for your kindness. And then last but not least, this die set has this really cool um, die right here. And I love it. It's like the first thing that caught my attention. And I didn't really even use it. So I thought at the very end, we're going to add a little bit of this because it's cute. All right, I'm going to put that right there. Lay that down. This is an adhesive sheet. And this is going to turn this piece of craft paper into a sticker. And then move everything out of the way. Come over here. Whoops. And we're going to cut this out. So this is very, a very, very, very skinny little scallop. So trying to put adhesive on the back of it would be very, very difficult. So look, I mean, it's, let's see if I can get it to pop out. Nope. It's very narrow. So using an adhesive sheet, really, see, look at that. But then you have this other piece too that you could use, this leftover scallop which I didn't even realize the first time I used this. Okay, let's, oh, I, her, come back. Not paying attention to what I'm doing. Let's cut the apple out. And, you know, there's another die in here that's a branch. I saw a beautiful card today somewhere online that was a branch and three little blossoms. And like on just, I can't remember, it was like a, a, a white background or I don't know it was just beautiful so don't forget about it didn't have any stamp just the sentiment so don't forget you know to use those dies by themselves too all right let's put it together and then we are done and I have some other things to show you you can either use the fat side or the skinny side depending on how you cut it I, I think depends on how it looks, I think I'm gonna use the polka dots. I think I like the polka dots better. And we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna try to get the adhesive off the back of here. <sighs> it's very narrow, let's see, let's see. You're, usually your take your pick tool will do it. There we go. Careful not to rip. And then we're not gonna use all of it. We're just gonna put that right there like that. And we'll just snip off the end like that. And let's press that down. A couple of dimensionals right here on our ribbon for our label. And last but not least, your apple. So, you know, this would be a great teacher gift. I say that every time, don't I? Everything we make, great teacher gift, but because it has the apple, but not necessarily teacher specific. Like I'm going to give this to my mail lady next week because she has been working so hard for me. And it's a nice little snack. Okay. There we go. You guys, the 3d project was probably the easiest one we did today. Now let me show you, I have a couple of bonus things. I have to show you this gorgeous card. I did not make this. This is from Amy Story. Um, she's a demonstrator up in uh, Denton, I believe. And this was a swap card I got at um, Backstage and it was my very favorite. 
So see how she used the negative part of that scallop? I thought that was so cute. I don't know, she just did a really good job. So I had to share this with you. I'm gonna take a picture of it and I'll have it on my blog on Monday with this card. Um, and this is my, my fourth project that I made for you guys. Um, this is that vellum, printed vellum. And I did kind of a watercolor wash on the back and um, adhered the vellum by using, guess what, adhesive sheet. I put a whole adhesive sheet on the back of the vellum and then stuck it down. And that worked really well. So you can't see the adhesive. All right, and maybe I'll make something for that from Bath and Body Works, because it's so cute. Okay, you guys, we made it. Thank you for joining me. Now remember, if you would like to earn these three projects for free as a make and take, all you have to do is put in an online order by Monday at midnight using this host code. If you don't use the host code, I assume you don't want the projects. The only reason you wouldn't use the host code is if you your order is over $150, then don't use that host code because you're also gonna get Stampin' Rewards and I'll still send you the projects. All right, you guys, thanks for joining me today. Please um, go get that PDF the free PDF over my blog. Let me know if you have questions and we'll be back next week with that adorable little Yeti, okay? Happy Labor Day to all of you. Have a great weekend. Spend some time with your family. Thanks, guys. Bye.